So what I like to do is look at some enzyme catalyzed reactions, or specifically the enzyme catalyzed reaction of glucose and oxygen to uh, release energy and to produce uh, CO2 and water. This reaction, when it's completed, will release approximately 2,870 kilojoules per mole of glucose that it catalyzes. And so it's what our body uses uh, for its primary energy source in a lot of the different kinds of cells, uh, especially like your brain and your muscles. So what I've diagrammed here is a, an energy diagram. And so it shows the progress of the reaction along the x-axis, and it shows the, the energy uh, contained in the molecules along the y-axis. So along the y-axis, we have the, the change of free energy. And so first thing I want to point out is there's a change of free energy to activate the reaction. So uh, without an enzyme, there has to be quite a bit of energy added to glucose and oxygen to get it to where it will spontaneously form CO2 and H2O. Um, with an enzyme, however, that energy that needs to be added is, is substantially less. The energy added is, the, is called the delta G, the change of free energy for the transition state. Now, overall, uh, for a reaction, the delta G with an enzyme and without an enzyme is the same. But the delta G of the transition state with an enzyme is much, much less. So there has to be substantially less free energy added for the in, uh, whenever the enzyme is used to catalyze the reaction. Now I'm going to reiterate the the total free energy change of the reaction is from right here to right here. That does not change whether you use an enzyme or you don't use an enzyme. What does change is the free energy of the transition state. So whenever you add this energy in, to get to here, you get that energy back out whenever you get to here. So the total free energy change will not will not change ultimately. Now the way you get a reaction to go uh, is you, you have to add energy to it. So if you were to add this much energy inside of a cell in, in your body uh, to get this reaction to occur spontaneously, um, you would, if you, let's say heat energy, you would basically burn alive. Uh, to cause this reaction to go. And so that's why our body has to use uh, an enzyme. So in this case, a glucokinase or a hexokinase of some kind. And that's the initiating enzyme. So glu uh, glucokinase will phosphorylate glucose and make it into uh, glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, and then several other enzymes are involved to finally get it down to CO2 and H2O. And so when you add an enzyme, it increases the speed of the reaction uh, by quite a bit without adding any extra energy. And so you can actually quantify how much it increases the reaction. That's called the, the catalytic power. How much does it increase? And so if you take, for example, the mole this molecule, CONH2, this is a molecule of urea and it's a waste product in our body. Um, it's, it's not just a waste product, it has other functions in our body, but primarily it's a waste product. And so you can catalyze this to, um, to ammonia 2NH4 plus a carbonate. And uh, whenever you do that with an enzyme, it happens substantially faster. So that reaction without an enzyme takes place uh, 3 times 10 to the negative 10th per second. So you get uh, 3 times 10 to the negative 10th reactions per second, which is basically that many molecules per second, which means it takes several hundreds of thousands of seconds to make that reaction uh, happen on one molecule. But if you add the enzyme urease to catalyze it, it takes place at 3 times 10 to the, to the positive fourth per second. And so the catalytic power is actually defined as the ratio of the catalyzed reaction to the uncatalyzed reaction. So basically it's 3 times 10 to the fourth divided by 3 times 10 to the negative tenth. 
and the threes cancel out, you actually get uh, an answer of 10 to the f uh, 14th. 10 to the 14th is the catalytic power of urease, the enzyme urease.